Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Poland's Garage. Welcome to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to do a quick walk around and show you the brand new to me 2015 Suzuki SFV650 Gladius. It's a controversial bike because it was supposed to be an upgrade from an SV650, which I showed you. I'm going to link a video to the uh, other bike that I bought, which is an SV650, the previous generation. This is technically the third generation of the SV model for some reason they call the SFV650 it's the same engine similar frame obviously the frame was updated but the way the frame and the fork sits and the way you sit on the bike and the riding experience this is essentially an SV650 I know it's a little bit controversial because it, the bike got a decent amount of hate from people because of the uh, unusually looking headlight for an SV model unusually looking headlight it's more like an oval style Instead of, your, instead of your classic circular halogen design. Also, there is some extra plastics like those covers right here, which cover the radiator. You have your radiator cap on the SVs on this side. Here to fill up your radiator cap, you have to remove the plastic trim before you do it. And uh, a lot of people, for some reason I heard, they don't like the mount of the um, SFV, of the, you know, the exhaust hanger, as well as both the passenger and the driver and the rider. Um, uh, foot pegs on the SV the foot pegs stick out from here in like a little bit shape of a V and that's how you mount the exhaust here is a one big piece it's maybe a little bit controversial I think it looks good I definitely think looking from this angle the bike looks really good the only downgrade for me on this bike is that my S my 2007 SV has an LED headlight or tail light in the back that's more integrated and is more at an angle. For some reason, even though this is a newer bike, they went back to the uh, kind of old school 90s kind of design where this whole rear mud flap is integrated with the tail light and it creates kind of a bulky design together with this huge, absolutely ginormous license plate light. I also think in different markets where the uh, license plates on motorcycles are bigger, this doesn't bring as much attention. But in US, when the license plates are fairly small, I mean, you can see I can cover the entire plate with just my hand. The, uh, the bulky design in the back definitely kind of takes away from the uh, looks of it. There is an option for about $300 shipped to your house. You can get a complete replacement of the rear fender as well as the tail light and the turn signals and obviously the, the plate mount and it creates essentially a smooth kind of oval style but smooth design all the way to the back with a diff completely different tail light so that might be an option for uh, some of you who don't like this design look moving a little bit to the uh, rims oh i should also mention this bike literally has less than a thousand miles on it and it's essentially fully original like there's no modifications whatsoever on the bike it's all stuck including every single little reflector in the back and obviously in the front as well so everything is completely stuck on this bike i will make sure to uh start the bike up for you and show you what the exhaust sounds like but let's do it in a second also one thing is that the sf the gladius or let's just refer to it as the gladius definitely has a bigger storage underneath because the entire seat comes off once you turn the key it's not much bigger obviously but in this one you can actually fit like your phone your wallet and your keys underneath the seat if you have to in the sv it's a little bit harder to do so as you can see the other side of the bike this is also the uh, two-tone i really like how the frame is black on this one because you can if you ever want to you can customize the bike and it's easier to customize the the fairings as well as the gas tank and the fenders when the bike frame itself is black obviously you have the blue rims which makes it a little bit harder because you have to repaint the rims but in this color combination with this like electric blue rims connected with the electric blue gas tank and the uh, pearl white i think it looks pretty nice i wouldn't really want to customize it much if any and especially the bike as i said i picked up the bike like less than 700 miles and now it has about almost 900 miles on it like 860 to 900 miles so i drove it for about 200 miles or so i definitely love the bike there's nothing wrong with it the clutch is literally brand new it grabs right away you let off the clutch it takes off right away so i wouldn't really modify anything just yet i think the bike is too new to modify it one of the uh, exactly the same features that you would have on the sv the older svs is your gas filler cap which i guess is a good thing because it's a pretty nice looking gas looking cap gas filling cap 
you got still those huge bulky mirrors. I don't know if there's some sort of regulations, that's why Suzuki makes such a huge mirrors on those bikes. Obviously you can see in them, but they don't look very well. And uh, one, what I noticed at least, except for the uh, gauge which I'm gonna turn on in a second, one thing that's different on the SVs compared to SFVs, your hazard light is right here, where compared on the SV, the hazard light is right here. This is literally the same thing. So if you're hopping from an SV to an SFV, everything is the same the gears feel the same the clutch feels the same the engine has supposedly a little bit more power i think it has about the same power the maybe the power delivery is a little bit smoother at lower rpms on the sfv compared to the sv having more power at higher rpms but that's about it and when you uh twist your key your light comes on so you have your neutral light your gas light plus some other dumb lights which don't turn on your oil is not a light anymore, it's a little screen. So there's no light, there's a little screen that for your oil. One thing that definitely is a plus on the SFVs, you actually have a gear, select, not selector, but it shows you which gear you're in compared to the um, SVs where you only have um, neutral light. You still have a neutral light, it shows you gears, now it's off, but if you're on and you're driving, it shows you gear zero as neutral. You still got the little check writing how you have in your SV as well as your mileage when we flip the uh, technician on shows you the bike is 873 miles now because I drove it here and you got your trip A or trip 1 trip 2 your miles per hour or your, your trip sorry like daily trip I guess you got your time and you're back to your auto so not too many options but anything you need is here one thing i never even checked in the uh, sv once you hold the button it will check go from miles to uh, kilometers here i think it's just a dead button maybe for adjusting your clock and uh, so that's about it i'm gonna start it in a second for you let's do a little it's not gonna be certainly a cold start but it's still gonna be a nice start hopefully there's no cars over here hopefully the wind is not too annoying for you guys but yeah from one more definitely the same thing but like one more difference also from the SV compared to SFV is you have the same exact turn signals but you have white uh, clear um, lenses compared to orange ones on the SVs and that's about it there really isn't much difference when you come to the bikes I personally I also have the original seat on my SV. I have the Corbin aftermarket front driver seat. And uh, this is, you know, it's double seat. So I think it's more comfortable because you get more as of back room. If you pick up speed more, like quickly, uh, you don't really risk sliding off the bike because you will always stop at the back of it on the SV here. It's a little bit different story because you guys can see the seat is more curved in. And yeah, this is the style of the original exhaust. Fun fact about the exhaust. You have the exhaust, and then you can't really see. I hope I, I wish I can, I can see the bottom exhaust. It's a completely fake. It's blacked off. It's just for looks, I guess. So it's only the top exhaust that actually works. Also, I should probably mention for the people who don't know and are looking to buy one of those is a V twin engine. So you obviously have two cylinders in the V spec. One right there. The one is hidden behind the frame. I believe it's a 90 degree V setup. But yeah, now let's see. I'm gonna put you guys down. I'm gonna start up the bike and we're gonna see what it sounds like. just a quick startup nothing too special the bike sounds good stuck but it's pretty quiet once you get up to speed you can barely hear the bike once you're wearing a helmet and if you are wearing headphones while riding this bike then you're not gonna hear the exhaust at all thankfully there is decent amount of aftermarket options and bolt-on m4 exhaust for this bike so they're not super expensive either and they're pretty easy to get off ebay so nothing too hard uh, to replace if you want to upgrade 
but that was it about the bikes as i said the riding experience is amazing it's just an, as an sv because essentially this isn't an sv just with a little bit more plastics and a little bit more modern version of it i guess uh it's great for beginners as well as for advanced riders it's amazing in the canyons it handles like a glove it's it's just a great first bike or it's a great extra bike to keep in your garage and take it through some curvy roads as you wish all right guys so if you guys enjoy don't forget to give it a like subscribe stay tuned see you next time let me know in the comments if you would choose the sv or the sfv i personally have a hard time choosing between both of them that's why i have both the bikes at the time right now but we will see how the time goes all right guys stay tuned and have a good one